right, seeing uh, people coming in. So let's give one more minute uh, for people to join. Uh, thank you all for joining us this morning, evening, wherever you are. Right, going to start in one more minute or so. Um, thanks again for joining. All right, I think we can uh, go ahead and uh, get uh, started. Um, please feel free to ask questions at any point. I'll try to make this as interactive as possible. Uh, so my name is Ron, I'm uh, the co-founder CTO of Tabna, and I'd like to use the, our time together today to show off some of the new features that we've been uh, uh, pushing out in uh, the last few weeks, uh, notably switchable models, personalization, and our onboarding agent. Uh, just to remind you, Tab9 is really the originator of the AI coding system category. We launched our first coding system a while back using uh, much smaller LMs, where LMs were just language models and not large. Uh, we are serving over a million users right now in thousands of companies supporting all major IDEs and over 80 uh, different programming languages. Uh, Tab9 is private, personalized, and protected, meaning that you can run it anywhere in VPC, in, uh, in the cloud, or, or on-premise in completely air-gapped environment. It is personalized, which is something that I'll talk about today. And it is protected, meaning that it has been trained or at least we offer models that have been trained only on permissive open source licenses. So I'd like to, again, as I said, use our time together mostly to show off uh, product capabilities. I'm going to switch to my IDE. And let me just share my IDE here. And for this demo, I'm, I'm going to use uh, VS Code. This is my VS Code. It has the Tab9 extension installed. Tab9 can be installed uh, from the marketplace. As you can see, Tab9 has been installed more than 7.3 million times with very positive reviews. And we're just going to start using Tab9 today. And in, in, the, in the, the first feature I want to show you guys is our new onboarding agent. So Tab9 provides a multitude of agents, agents that allow you to explain code, generate tests, write documentation, fix code, et cetera, et cetera. But one of the new agents that we just released is the onboarding agent. And the goal of the onboarding agent is to really make it easy for people to enter a new code base, to really reduce the time it takes to make a developer productive in a new code base. And what the onboarding agent does it is really a combination of capabilities that go and analyze everything in the project and basically provide a summary of how the project behaves, how to run it, uh, and how to really become productive in the project. So let's just click on board to this uh, example. And what you can see Tab9 doing here, it says this is a collection of Java demo examples, which is right. And it gives me the instructions on how to install the project, how to run the, the web project, which is indeed based on Spring Boot. 
and do all sorts of other operations in order to start working with this project. Part of what Tab9 does after giving this high level summary is produce a number of follow-up questions. These are questions that the agent thinks are relevant for further onboarding you into uh, the project. So you can say, you know, what is the purpose of each module in the project and how they interact with each other, or what are the key features and functionalities demonstrated by you know a particular module, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So let's say what is the purpose of each module. So we, we can ask Tab9 again, the onboarding agent, to provide a summary of each one of the key modules in, in the project. Again, helping me to get onboarded and become productive much faster as I enter this new project. Right? And, and, and you will see this is quite long form if we look at one of them. You know, let's just look at unit tests, so you say the unit test, this module contains example of unit tests, showcases how to write unit tests for Java uses, using JUnit, or, you know, again, this is uh, this is my project that I use for demonstration, so it has a bunch of different Java modules demonstrating uh, different capabilities, including, you know, Z Iran, which is uh, just a module containing some Python stuff that I've done recently. Uh, so, so again, uh, the idea of an agent here is to uh, really be inquisitive and ask the user what are the next steps that the user would like to find out about. And there is a conversation going on here. Uh, you can keep uh, looking for uh, questions suggested by the agent, or you can actually ask your own question, something like, I don't know, uh, can you tell me more about the ZLAN module? Right, and, and, and you can see that it tells you that it's actually different than other modules in the project because it contains this Python script for generating the Koch triangle, actually, which I did. So, and explains you the main script in, in this module. So again, you are able to, use the onboarding agent, you can have really a conversation with the project that I just uh, onboarded to, assuming I don't know anything about this project. I can already become quite productive. I can start running it. I understand all the modules in the project and I can have a deeper conversation asking what different parts of the project do and how different modules interact with each other. With each other. So that's kind of in a nutshell, uh, the onboarding agent. You can obviously try it in any, any one of your favorite projects and see how that works for you. Um, the next feature that I'd like to talk about is Tab9 uh, personalization. And personalization is really a big feature. Onboarding agent is part of that because, it, again, it is personalized to your specific project. It is uh, allowing you to understand the project that you just stepped into. But more generally, personalization allows us to ask general questions and interact with our code base. Um, so let me just ask something like, uh, how do I call the Acme services there? And in this project somewhere, I, I, I know that I have the Acme services there. And I'm just trying to see how to call that. And what you'll see is that Tab9 responds by providing me very detailed instructions uh, that explain the Acme services layer. So it tells me like which procedure I can use to call it, how do I create the payload, and you know how to really in invoke that. And if you can look down here, you will see that Tab9 also provides the references on which it, it based the answer. So in this case, I can go to this app.java and see that I have like the Acme services layer and a way to call that, which is execute the Acme service request, which is what Tab9 offered here, right? And, and, and at this point, I can keep on interacting uh, with, with Tab9. I can keep on asking questions like, you know, can you make the payload contain uh, the values two and R? And, and again, it is a conversation that is aware, right, of, of the all, all the workspace, everything that is going on in the project. And in this case, you know, I, I made uh, I 
asked this question about the active services layer, Top9 gave me some response that included the payload. That response was based on Top9 knowing everything that is happening in my project. And then I can also ask Top9 to like modify things in the payload that it just suggested over here. And, and again, like modify the code, modify what I want created and create my new thing based on what existed or what already existed in my, in my project. And I think that I can do with top nine personalization because it knows everything about my code base. I can write new code based on some old code. So let's say I want to write a new uh, Spring Boot controller uh, that is based on some old controller that I have. Let's say I want to write uh, a new controller called uh, Card Controller uh, based on another controller that I know that exists, which is my hello controller that I did uh, before. So I can mention that using the at sign. So I just want to say, write a new controller called card controller based on the hello controller that I have somewhere else and that has an endpoint called, let's say, card checkout. And what am I will do at this point, it, it will look through my project. It has like the entire project context. And in particular, it understands this mention of the hello controller and what it does now. It basically creates a new card controller uh, that follows the same structure of the hello controller that I mentioned. So in this case, if you look, let me, let's let the top nine finish generation here. Uh, Tab9 will provide the hello controller as a reference. And if you look at the hello controller, you'll see that it has like uh, the, the mapping here, uh, you know, the, the endpoint here, and uh, the controller annotation on the controller itself, et cetera. And you will see that the structure that Tab9 was inspired by is this hello controller here when it generated the new card controller with the endpoint of card checkout. And again, I can keep chatting with Tab9 and say, you no, know, can you please add an endpoint or uh, whatever, let's say card reset. Yeah, so I, I actually didn't want it to do, <laughs> to do this, but yeah. Uh, it did something that is similar to what I wanted, which is creating the card reset here. I actually wanted it to add it uh, to the new code that it generated in history. So again, had I copied it and worked on that, that would have uh, worked correctly. But I think what it did was the right thing only in, in the wrong place. Uh, so again, again, I can work around that, uh, but let me just go to the next example here. Um, let's see what other things I can show you in terms of personalization. I think one of the interesting things, again, is that Tab9 understands everything in, in the context. So even when I'm doing uh, not chat, or even when I'm doing uh, things around uh, code completions, uh, let me go to, oh, is that the right one? No. Just see that I, I get the right example here. So. All right, so what, what we see here is that I have like a, a very simple main program in which I want to create a user and I have two imports. One of them imports a user and the other one imports a, a user builder and user builder uses like a fluent API to create a new user. So you see it like takes a user builder with first name, last name, the Acme org ID, age, phone, address, etc. And what, what Hubline does is because it is aware of the entire project, because it knows about imports, because it knows to, to follow kind of definition of functions in these imports, when I ask Tab9 to create a new user, what Tab9 would do is basically create this user in a way that respects the Fluent API that is being imported here. So Tab9 will generate code that uses the user build there correctly um, because it was imported here. And note that I don't need that file to be open or anything like that because Tab9 knows to follow imports in order to get 
this uh, important information when it is generating uh, new code. So again, by just like having the right imports here, Top9 knows that the ask to create a new user should use the Fluent API that was defined in, in the user builder here. So uh, to, to kind of like recap this particular example, what we see here is Top9 being aware of your project in code completion allows it to complete the code in an interesting way that is relevant to your project rather than producing a generic completion that is based only on what it has learned in, in open source. All right, so let me go to uh, some other examples here. Um, let's see what else is interesting here in terms of like, oh, I, I actually, I forgot to show you what happened, which is quite important. Uh, when I asked Top9 to not use the workspace and I asked my question about the, how to call the active service layers. So let's do that. Let me turn off the workspace indicator. Now Top9 is not going to use any information about my workspace and I'm going to ask it again, how do I call the Acme services layer? And what you will see here is, is really that Top9 produces you know, a generic answer on Acme services layer that based on open source and is really not that useful for the context of, of my project, right? So that is the difference between asking the question based on top nine that is personalized and is aware of what is going on in your code base versus the generic answer. So if you just ask top nine in a non-personalized way, not using the workspace, you will see that top nine provides an answer that is completely kind of manufactured based on open source code and is not really informative for my project, then if I repeat that now with using the workspace, let me repeat exactly the same question, you'll see that Top9 really provides information about you know, the, the execute admin services request, again, just like we saw a few minutes ago on how to call the Acme services layer in my project, again, being aware of what is going on uh, for me. Yeah, with references to how to use that in, in my in the context of my project. Um, let me see if there are any questions here in the in the chat that I can maybe answer. So yeah, would it work for uh, C based projects with the make file? Uh, probably not as well as we would like, but you know, give it a try, give it a try and uh, let us know, give us feedback. Maybe uh, I'm guessing again, it's been a while since I wrote really complicated make files, but uh, make files could be really uh, quite uh, complicated to, to deal with, especially like if you have nested ones in a large project. So yeah, curious to, to hear your feedback, um, Hendra. If, if you try, if you give the try with, with make files. Uh, all right, let me close that. Again, happy to take uh, questions at, at any point. Um, maybe let me uh, switch to maybe one of the last things that I, I wanted to show in terms of, of the demo, which is Tab9 switchable models. So one of the features that we released recently is the ability to switch the model that is powering top nine chat. In my demo so far, I've used a, a model that is top nine plus Mistral. It's our own model that is based on Mistral. And when we look at different models offered by top nine right now, you will see that they are uh, classified as private, protected, and by their performance level. So let me explain each one of these indicators and let me start by Tab9 Protected. Tab9 Protected is private, protected, and has what we call the better performance category. So Tab9 being private means that it can run anywhere. It can run in your PPC, on-premise, in class, in complete isolation. So you control completely where it runs. In particular, you can run it without information ever leaving your organization. Being protected means that we protect your IP. We never generate polluted IP into your code base because the Tab9 protected model has been trained only 
on code with permissively licensed open source licenses. So again, private means runs in isolation, so to speak. Protected means we can guarantee that it has been trained on the on permissive open source licenses. And the performance here is an indication of like whether this is like the better performance category or the best performance category. And you will see some explanation of what we mean you know, by, by this performance, privacy, and protection. So there are elaborate explanations for each, each of the models. Uh, so the model that I used in my demo so far has been the tab 9 straw model. tab 9 straw model is private, but it is not protected. Uh, it, the reason that it is not protected is because it has been pre-trained on uh, public data that may have contained code. We don't uh, have exact knowledge of the pre-training of Mistral here, but it has been fine-tuned only on permissively licensed open source code. So we cannot guarantee protection, but it is, you know, in hand waving fashion, it's a relatively safe model because it has been fine tuned only on permissive license open source. So whatever has been potentially polluted has been uh, happening in, in pre-training and not in the code or software engineering fine tuning phase of this model. And this model generally, because it has seen more things, uh, performs slightly better uh, than Talmai Protected. Again, both of them are private. Both of them can run in the organization, in the VPC, or on-premise in isolation. Two other models that we provide right now are also connection to GPT 3.5 Turbo and GPT 4 Turbo. And you know you can switch between them by just checking the, the box here, right? So you can just check this. And we can repeat the same question that we just asked. You can keep interacting with Talmai exactly the same way with different models. Let me say again, how do I call the app and the services there? And now again, the heavy lifting is done here by uh, by the tab nine personalization module, right? But now you will get results the, from, uh, from GP4 basically, and not from uh, tab nine Mistral. So the result itself may be different you know, but it is based on the same uh, kind of personalization information provided by Tab9. And again, you'll be able to jump uh, from here to the example that inspired this generation. Uh, Yuri, to your question on why the GPTs are not private, it's because they are API based. You cannot run uh, GPT 3.5 or GPT 4 inside uh, your well, VPC. Uh, in, in some cases for large organizations, they may have a private endpoint of uh, GPT-4 and you know, it's not exactly private as we define it, but it has better uh, guarantees on what flows where and what flows through the internet. And in this case, Tab9 will be able to connect to the internal GPT in the organization if, if it exists, right? But in, in this case, what I show here, uh, these are like the external GPT endpoints, which means that your code is being sent right to uh, OpenAI in this case as the provider of these GPT models, and uh, and and so we 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 do not have strong guarantees, you know, on, on the privacy uh, nor on obviously the protection because these models have been trained on anything and everything that is out there right so uh, again i i cannot or top nine cannot vouch for the data retention policy of of these uh, api based uh, models and when you use them you will have to accept the basically the terms of conditions of using these uh, gpt based models so uh, yuri does that answer your question Yeah, so so you'll see I can I, I can basically go now and we can just do the, the comparison of the different models. These are just again the different slightly different trade-offs. So the models will perform, will produce slightly different results. So we just did this with GPT-4, now we're doing with, with GPT 3.5. Previously we did it with uh Tab9 Mistral. You'll see that the, the results are slightly different, but the essence is the same, right? They're all like talking 
about the same construction of using the execute ACME services request and providing very similar example in terms of like the uh, key and password because it is based on something that already exists in our project, right? So one of one of the points that I'm trying to to make here is that the the models do matter. Different models provide different trade offs, both in terms of privacy protection and performance. But for many tasks, you don't have to compromise your privacy and protection, or you don't have to compromise your privacy, and you can run with tab nine withdrawal uh, in your VPC or completely on premise and get uh, very, very, very good results that are comparable to you know the, the best models in, in the in the world at any point, but without compromising uh, security and, and potentially uh, privacy. Uh, for tab nine uh, switchable models, the administrator in the organization can define which models are available to all users in the org. So again, in, in my organization here, the user, which is me, can pick any one of these models, but in your organization, potentially you, you may want to limit it only to private models or maybe just to tab nine protected, which is private and protected. Um, so just to just to recap here again, all the functionality of tab nine can run with each one of the models. Again, trading off uh, using the different uh, trade offs here, um, and switching between models. You know, just a, a click away. I showed you the the onboarding agent, which really provides kind of a guided tour, a live tour of the current project, and allows you to become more productive in the project in a short time. I showed you the ability to basically chat with your code base, ask questions on how do we do something, where do we do something, and get results that are based on tab nine, knowing your entire code base, generating new code based on old code by using mentions as a reference to mention old code when you write new code, and actually the functionality of the, the switchable models that allows you to really switch models in click. And I would like to switch to, you know, if there are questions or things that you'd like to me to show in the demo, please ask now in the chat. Otherwise, I'll switch back to some slides and talk a little bit about how this stuff works and, and what makes it kind of like, uh, what makes it produce the, the current results. Yeah. So uh, Rakesh asks, does the line offer similar setup of providing option for different internal fine tune models on VPC tab nine? Rakesh, you mean the, the ability to switch between fine tune models in, in the click here, but this kind of switching, uh, dynamically switching between fine tune models, is that the intention? Because if, if that is the question, then, then right now we don't provide it uh, in, in this way. Yeah. yeah. So in, for internal models, including fine tuned ones, uh, we typically do the routing based on department in the organization or based on language. Um, so I'll be curious maybe offline to learn more about the use case that requires switching between these models dynamically which is not based on language and not based on like organizational unit, like the same user, same language, kind of switching models like I just showed here. Typically when we do like the fine tuned models, they are fine tuned for a particular task. And so again, uh, I suggest that we take this uh, offline uh, to discuss. A any other questions? Any other things that you'd like to see in the demo? Okay, so I'll, I'll switch back to, to slides and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about how this stuff works and what is going on uh, behind the scenes here. I see some Q&A. All right, so I'll, I'll let the team here handle Q&A. Uh, I'm going to share kind of highly personalized software recommendations. So again, as I showed in demo, but generally speaking, LLMs lack context. They've been trained on all the code in the world, but not on my project. So they don't know what is it that I'm trying to do, how am I doing stuff, right? And not don't know how things are done in my organization. And so with, without top nine personalization, what you will get is recommendations that are often generic and not tailored uh, to your organization or, or to your team. 
And the context really significantly improves effectiveness of GMI in general, and definitely all the tasks that software engineering tasks that Tab9 handles. And, and so what Tab9 does right now, you can use it to, you, Tab9 uh, localizes or uses context through local code awareness, which is uh, aware of all the code that is available in your IDE, in your project. You can also use mentions as I showed uh, to focus Tab9 on specific aspects of your code base. You can connect Tab9 to remote software repositories to provide global code awareness. Um, so the administrator of the organization can add additional repositories beyond what exists on the local machine. So everything that you do or that your users do in the organization is contextualized not only on what exists on their machine, but also on larger, wider context like other microservices that exist in the organization, um, golden example repositories that exist in your organization and like users to basically learn from or get inspired by. And of course, Top9 keeps offering uh, model customization to uh, fine tune and train specific models for whatever uh, task you have in, you have in mind. All right. So when you look at the the kind of when I showed you the examples in the ID, it was pretty hard to understand where where Tab9 is drawing context from. But it's actually quite a rich set of things that Tab9 is looking at. It's looking at the current file, looking at open files, looking at the current selection, looking at um, you know imported libraries, as I showed you in the user builder example. It is looking at uh, syntax and compiler errors, also at runtime errors, other project files, project metadata, Git history, conversation history, repositories that are connected remotely, and also other sources of information, which I did not show you, but you can connect Tab9 also to Jira and to other sources of information as, as, additional, as additional context. Yeah, the, the context uh, Kunal is, is basically aware of the version and branch that you're working on. It is a completely you know, local context, is localized to the code that is available on your machine, and it is being updated all the time. So con local context is live, right? So if you look at kind of the whole spectrum of context, right? You can start on the left with no context at all, but you can start looking at the current file, you know, all open files, semantically relevant elements in the, in the code base, all related elements in the local code base, the code bases of the entire org, remote repositories, etc., and also non-code uh, source of information such as uh, Jira requirements, conference documents, other knowledge bases, etc. So really, what we're trying to do in Tab9 is push the context all the way to the right, right? To get you maximal context, no matter what you're trying to do as a developer, give you the maximal context available. Again, going all the way from requirements and documentation to the tasks that you are uh, trying to accomplish right now in your ID. Uh, Tab9 continues to offer solutions with zero data retention, even on our completely uh, SaaS solution in Tab9. We don't retain any user data, uh, user information does not meet the hard drive. As we say, we don't share data with third parties and we are not using your data to train Tab9 models, right? And you know, when you're working with Tab9, everything is encrypted in transit over a cell and you know, only stored uh, in memory while the response is being generated. So. We are really doing all this personalization work without storing any information on our servers. Again, for, for the local context, for the global context, there is a server component that can run in your organization, again, in your VPC or on-premises in a completely air-gapped manner. So you can get all the value of top nine, all the value of personalization without sacrificing privacy. So let me talk technically a little bit about how this works in terms of the usage of retrieval augmented generation or RAM. So what is going on when you are doing the local uh, context, the local code awareness, is that you are writing a prompt like we just did in the chat and Tab9 uses 
brand retrieval when they generate an or retrieval to retrieve relevant documents, relevant code from the locally available data in your IDE. So to answer uh, Kunal's question, because we are looking at the locally available data in your IDE, we are looking at your branch, we're looking at the version, we are looking at whatever is available for you locally. We use that information to augment the prompt with the local code retrieved from uh, the local project. And we then use it uh, to hit, to query tab nine's models. And this produces your personalized response. So this is what is happening in kind of local RAG. In global RAG, which is connecting to remote repositories, we're doing something very similar, but now we're adding not just the locally available code in your ID, but also the globally available sources of information and code repository is repositories in the organization. And we combine the information from these two sources in our retrieval algorithms in order to, again, um, query the model and get to a personalized response. Again, happy, happy to take questions at, at any point. Uh, the onboarding, onboarding agent, as I said, just helps you to get up to speed faster on, on the project by giving you a summary of the project's elements and follow-up questions that are really generated uh, to kind of uh, query or ask the human what are the next steps that they would like to know about and kind of go, go out from there. And the switchable models, because the Gen AI landscape is evolving very quickly, uh, Tab9 is kind of um, guaranteed to give you always the best model that are available out there while respecting your privacy and protection. So we provide a gallery of choices between models. Uh, you can switch models actually, as I do, uh, between projects or even between questions based on what you're trying to achieve in terms of privacy, uh, protection, and, and performance, right? So again, you have models that you can switch in real time uh, between runtime protected, which is our own original model that has been trained with strong guarantees, both on privacy and protection. Tab9 Mistral, which is our newest model that offers again, strong privacy, but slightly weaker protection and the GPT 3.5 tool pro and GPT 4 tool pro, which are uh, not private and not protected but are API based and could be quite useful for certain questions. Yeah. So the, the context sizes of the proprietary models, again, depending exactly on where you look is between 8K and uh, 16K right now. Probably again, we are iterating on new models all the time. They're going to increase to 32K uh, again to respect uh, the latency requirement probably going to stop around 32K for the time being. But again, models are changing almost on a, on a weekly basis, Mahindra. So even when I say Tab9 Mistral, it is not necessarily the same Tab9 Mistral that was you know two weeks ago, right? So these models are ever evolving and we are uh, going to introduce additional models to our switchable models in, in Tab9 chat as we evaluate them in terms of privacy, protection, and performance. Again, um, making sure that we provide our customers with kind of a wide variety of options that give you the best trade-offs in terms of privacy, protection, and performance. Uh, so that is it. I think I, I, I've had the, the demo already. Uh, so really, you can really optimize Tab9 to the fullest by getting the best of both worlds, right? You get like top nine with years of experience on you know, creating a really great AI experience for you guys and also the best models out there uh, with more to come with the dynamic ability to switch between them. Uh, so yeah, happy to take the rest of the time for uh, Q&A. Let me see something is going on here. All right. 
moment. Let me just put the summary slide here. Uh, again, Tab9 continues to put you in control. Tab9 is the AI that you control as part of that. You can control and specify the models that you'd like to have in your organization. You can set default models. Uh, you can have users choose from the list of approved models and switch instantly between models. And, you know, in Tab9 Pro, which is, again, our um, offering for individual developers, you have all four models available and you can basically rock on and use the model that you would like uh, that is most suitable for your use case. Yeah, so yeah, you, right now, Rakesh, uh, to, to your question about setting uh, different repos per team, uh, it's not available yet, but it is coming soon. We are working exactly on that, having different teams connect to different repos uh, for, uh, and, and that will be available soon. Uh, Mahendra, yes, there are different models being used for Tab9 uh, code completion and tab nine chat. Uh, there are different trade-offs in terms of latency requirements and also you know the, the context for code completions. Uh, the latency is much more critical than in chat. And therefore we are using like specialized specialized models that have been optimized for code completion. Yeah, if there are no more questions, I'd like to thank everyone uh, for joining and uh, thank you for spending time with us this evening.